Hello and welcome to ICANN Media. We are coming to you from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. We are just outside of Canada Place where a huge conference is going on called Globe 2014. I'm your host Rob Hislop and over the next couple of days we're going to be heading into the conference taking in some of the many sessions and talking to some of the keynote speakers. Some of the topics discussed, changing energy landscapes and responsible resource management. Now there are over 250 plus speakers, world leaders in their industry talking here over the next three days. 50 plus countries are represented and there are over 300 exhibitors at the trade show. We are going to give you a taste of what Globe 2014 has in store. We're on the trade show floor here at Globe 2014 in Vancouver, BC. Joining us is John Neat with Globe Performance Solutions. John, thanks for being here on ICANN Media. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Globe Performance Solutions is part of the Globe group of companies. Uh, Globe organizes this trade fair, which uh, we're very happy to be part of. Our group focuses specifically on verifying the performance of environmental technologies to ensure that they do what they say and to make it easier for buyers of those technologies to implement them. So, in my mind, if somebody's marketing something, they say it does something, it should actually do it. Good That's point. not always the case? Well, sometimes it will do some good things, but maybe not perform exactly as was being promoted by the company. So this provides another level of assurance. But for all of the really good companies, and we have many in Canada and around the world that provide very good value in terms of environmental performance, what we tend to be able to provide is a bar for the good companies to set. And usually the good ones can get over the bar and sometimes the ones that aren't quite as good need some help on figuring out how to improve their technology so that they too can be able to offer services that will meet the needs of clients. So do you get then brought in by the company to make sure that their claims are as stated? Yes, I mean, we typically get involved in doing two things. We'll often sit down with the company. Uh, we have an application process that's no cost to the company that will allow them to tell us what they do. We'll engage with them to make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into. Then there's a subsequent phase where they will make a decision whether this verification will be of assistance. Sometimes it's easier for the company to market their product by looking at other certification requirements in the marketplace. So our program is flexible enough to work with the company to identify the best avenue for them to be able to convince their clients that they have a product that will meet their needs. So how have you th seen things change over the years? Are companies a little bit better at st at doing what they say they can do say than in the past? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, one thing that we, we do like though, at the end of the day, we like to encourage innovation. So we like people to step up to the plate and say, hey, we can do this. Because that's part of really building a strong sector. Uh, on the other hand, we do also provide that sort of fallback to be able to verify performance. And we think that's increasingly important. And we're finding also buyers are demanding it of the supply chain anyway. So any large corporation now is looking to find find ways of ensuring that what they're buying is in fact going to meet the requirements that they have. So has that been one of the biggest changes in buyers being a little bit more active? I, I, th I think so. I mean, you know, when this concept that we came up with was really uh, originating in terms of its design, it was initially focused on the buyer. You know, here's a buyer, I've got a technology, nobody believes that it works, so can you give me some support and some verification of what it is that we're doing? But increasingly now we're seeing the demand side, the buyers saying, hey, listen, you know, these are the things that we need addressed. So, you know, let's make sure that the companies that are selling their wares and their solutions are in fact meeting those needs. Sustainability is key here, I guess, in a lot of the areas that you're looking at as far as the environment and, and such. Yeah, uh, sustainability is very much part of what drives this. Uh, we work fortunately very closely with the Government of Canada. What we provide is in fact right up here, the Canada Verified logo uh, is provided to us under license and uh, so why would the government do this? Well, the government of Canada and many of the provincial governments and municipal governments are looking to find ways of getting more transparent information that will in fact allow them to support their sustainability objectives. So that's a logo up there that people should be looking for and where might they find it? Well, I think that's something that they should be looking for. Uh, there are some things we're doing now to try to get that logo more widely known. Um, there's in fact some discussion about allowing that logo to be placed on products, uh, but we're not there yet. Uh, right now it's tended to be more focused on the informed buyers and the companies themselves. Um, but that logo is not only a logo that's important in Canada, 
um, in this pavilion, which is part of the trade fair floor here at Globe, we're working with our counterpart in Korea, the Korean Environmental Industry and Technology uh, Institute, KITI, and uh, they also have a logo. Uh, the reality is there are many countries and many logos, so ultimately what the government of Canada is trying to support is moving towards a standardized approach and perhaps a standardized logo. So we'll see if that happens perhaps in the next couple of years. Okay. John, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.